In this training video, we're going to build a roller chain sprocket. You can access the Onshape document by clicking the provided link or searching for sprocket within the Onshape public documents. A sprocket typically does not have many features, but it is a complex part to build. When sizing a sprocket, I usually reference several tables and multiple equations listed in the Machinery's Handbook. Here, we'll build a 16 tooth sprocket to support a number 40 roller chain. To get started, we'll need to build a revolved sprocket blank. In Onshape, I'll create a new part studio. I can select the right plane and insert a sketch using the In Context menu by clicking the right mouse button. Now I can view normal by clicking the N key and hide the planes by clicking the P key on the keyboard. Now this is a revolve feature, so I'll start by drawing a horizontal center line and then two intersecting rectangles to make up the shape representing the cross section of the sprocket. Notice that I may need to mouse over entities. This wakes them up so I can pick up dynamic inferencing. Many of the dimensions listed in the Machinery's Handbook are diameters, so I like to copy the profile to both sides of the center line and then input diametric dimensions. I'll dimension the bore diameter, the major diameter, the hub diameter, the tooth thickness, and finally, the overall thickness. When the sketch is fully dimensioned, it turns black. Now I can exit the sketch and select the Revolve command. I pick the three areas that make up the top half of the profile, and then the center line to make my first feature. Notice that with Onshape, I didn't have to trim up all the sketch entities. Now I'll apply some new features. I'll add a 1 16th of an inch fillet where the hub meets the sprocket body. And I can key in the fraction, and Onshape calculates the value. I will also break the outer edge of the hub with a 1 32nd inch chamfer. The machinery handbook provides detail of the taper along the teeth of the sprocket, so I'll add a two direction chamfer along the outer edges. This will be 0.25 inches down and 0.062 inches into the part. Okay, the easy part is done. We have the basic shape of the sprocket, and now we need to create the teeth. Let me take a minute to discuss what these look like. The teeth of a sprocket are really just a circular pattern of a specific tooth profile. That profile contains three arcs and a small line segment. Unfortunately, the geometry that dictates the dimension and positions is a bit more complicated. There are a number of entities and dimensions that need to be laid out. The Machinery's Handbook provides all the equations and diagrams needed, and I created an Excel spreadsheet to help me with the math. You can simply specify the roller chain dimensions and the number of teeth, and the spreadsheet calculates 19 values. We will use seven of these dimensions to drive our sketch in Onshape. So let's get started. Since I can use the sketch for all sprockets of different sizes, I'm going to create this sketch in its own part studio. I'll sketch on the front plane, look normal to it, and hide the planes once again. I'll start by drawing a circle that represents the pitch diameter of the sprocket, and then I'll draw the first circle of the tooth profile. It's positioned to be vertically aligned with the center, and its center lies on the pitch circle. At this time, I also want to draw a vertical and horizontal reference line, and dimension the two circles. Following the diagram in the Machinery's Handbook, I need to sketch three lines. These will help locate the center of another circle that makes up the tooth profile. The last line is drawn perpendicular to the second, and it will become the little line segment in our profile. I can drive the angles of the first and second line with dimensions that were calculated in my spreadsheet. Now for the next circle. This circle is centered at the intersection on the right and is coincident with the intersection on the left. We need to impose tangency between the two circles and can input the diameter dimension from the spreadsheet. Okay, one last circle to sketch. This circle starts at a point to the lower left of the first circle. And from the spreadsheet, we know its vertical offset from center. We also know its diameter. 
Finally, we need to make this new circle tangent to the line segment. One last piece of construction geometry is needed. A line from the center of the pitch circle to the upper edge of the third circle. We'll dimension the angular position of this line by keying in 180 degrees divided by the number of teeth, or in this case 16. This line indicates where the top of the tooth profile ends. Okay, we created half a tooth profile. Now I want to clean it up a bit. I want to clarify which entities are for construction and which are important for mirroring and patterning. To do this, I'll start splitting out the parts of the geometry that are important. I split the left circle from where it intersects this line to where it tangently touches this line. I can split the little line at this point as well. I can split the next arc where it touches the line and where it tangently touches the first circle. Now I can convert many of the remaining entities into construction geometry. I'm ready to mirror the left side of the tooth profile to the right, and then I can do one more split operation on the center circle. When I'm done, I have seven entities that make up my profile. To use this on my sprocket, I'll copy the entire sketch using a right mouse click. This is very easy to do in Onshape. Then I switch tabs, choose the front face of my sprocket, and with a right mouse click, paste the sketch. I'll edit the new sketch and center it on my sprocket. And then I'm ready to pattern the tooth profile. To pattern the sketch, I simply need to choose the seven sketch entities. I'll see a partial preview as I key in the number of teeth I desire. Once I use the left mouse button to complete the sketch pattern, I'll see the entire pattern appear. The blue color indicates the sketch is partially constrained. By default, Onshape patterns around the sketch origin, but allows you to move its center. I want it constrained to the origin, so I'll attach it by dragging. Now that my full pattern is correctly placed, I can use it to shape my sprocket. I simply choose the extrude command and use the intersection option. Onshape extrudes the profile and keeps any volume it intersects. The sprocket is complete. A few housekeeping operations will make my sprocket usable by others. First, I'll rename the part. I do this by accessing the right mouse button menu over the part name on the left. I can also rename the tab with a similar action. I'll rename the part studio which contains the master sketch. This sketch can be used by other people to build sprockets of other dimensions. Finally, I'll upload my Excel spreadsheet so anyone accessing the document can understand my calculations. Any data can be uploaded into Onshape documents and shared. Okay, this completes the lesson. If you'd like to access this document, simply click the provided link or search for Sprocket in Onshape's public documents.